Game five offers the Yankees the unexpected chance to close out the series in Dodger country. But not if Don Sutton, who has never pitched badly in World Series competition, can prevent it. He'll lock horns once again with the Yankees' Don Gullett. And the Dodgers take the field. The Dodgers, with their backs against the wall, will send Dusty Baker into left field today, and it's a sun field in the daytime here at Dodger Stadium. Dusty Baker in left, in center. Again today, it is Reggie Smith. He played in center yesterday, having been primarily a right fielder this season. Over in right field today, it will be Lee Lacey. He was there yesterday against the left-handed pitcher for the Yankees, Don Gullett. They want his right-handed bat in there. At third base, and for the Los Angeles Dodgers, Ron Say. Working at shortstop, hoping that the struggles he's had with his bat will not cause him trouble. A field, Bill Russell. At second base, the other man in the middle defense who has been struggling with his bat, Davey Lopes, even though he did hit a homer over the middle yesterday, out at center field, he's still not hitting the way he can. Steve Garvey is at first base for Los Angeles and doing the catching today as he has through all of the World Series games, Steve Yeager. And on the mound, the right-hander, Don Sutton, who came away with no decision against New York in his opening performance. He pitched seven innings. He was touched for eight hits and three runs all earned. Now, offensively, for the New York Yankees, you will have leading off Mickey Rivers. Mickey Rivers, who is four for 19 in this World Series. Willie Randolph will play second and bat number two. Thurman Munson hitting third. Reggie Jackson cleaning up. Chris Chambliss will be batting fifth. Greg Nettle sixth. Lou Pinella move back to the number seven position today. Bucky Dent will be at shortstop hitting eighth. And the pitcher, Don Gullett, the designated hitter, is not being used this year in the World Series. It's used alternating years. It'll be used next year. And so now we go to the task at hand as Don Sutton warms up some comments from Tom Seaver. Well, you know, Keith, these guys are here in the World Series. The Dodgers do have their backs against the wall. But still, they're here in the World Series. There are 600 other ball players, players from the Red Sox and the Cincinnati Reds and the Royals, and they're all home watching it on TV. They know the Dodgers know they either win today and go back to Yankee Stadium, they lose, they go to spring training, but it's kind of a professional attitude that they know they've gotten here through a 162 game schedule in the playoffs and they're going to give it everything they have, obviously. All right, the first pitch of the ball game. Rolls it off to the left side, just beyond the Dodger dugout for strike one and defensively the Dodgers set up on Rivers with Ron Say in on the grass at third. They give him a little bit of a gap in right center field. Not figuring, I guess, that he will pull Sutton. Beats it foul on the ground behind the plate, and it's strike two. Keith Sutton's game plan against Rivers, as he said in the pregame show, keep the ball away from him, make him hit the ball in the air to left field. Try not to give him too much stuff inside. Evidence of that, Dusty Baker toward the line in left field. Brought that one inside. He had a two-strike count. Brought one in. Got a little high to Mickey Rivers, and the count is now one and two. You can see the position of Baker. He's quite well toward the left field corner. That was a waste pitch. Now Sutton comes back on the outside corner, and Rivers fouls it to the screen. If they do go inside, Keith, like they did the pitch previous to that one, they're going to come in off the plate. They're not going to throw the ball for a strike inside. I think if they throw the ball for a strike inside, it's going to be a mistake. He made a mistake against Willie Randolph in Yankee Stadium and paid for it. On Willie, see him giving the signs for outside. Yeager wants it outside. One and two to Rivers, and it's low and away. The Dodgers can ill afford many mistakes today. Say backs off the grass. And the pitch is just outside. And so Don Sutton now has gone to a full count on Mickey Rivers, three and two. On deck, Randolph and Thurman Munson, the third hitter. Get on the ground to Davy Lopes at second base. One out.
Sutton had to work a little as Rivers was patient, but he got him. Four to three, second to first. Here's Willie Randolph. You used the word patient. It's unusual for Mickey to be patient. He's an impulsive swinger. Ball is hit well to left center. Reggie Smith on the move with it. Makes the catch. So two Yankees are retired. In the first game at Dodger Stadium, the Yankees jumped out to a 3-0 lead in the first inning. So far, Don Sutton has been able to get the first two hitters, and here comes a tired Thurman Munson. Right leg, tender, but he has done a masterful job behind the plate throughout this World Series. About this time in the series, everybody starts conjecturing as to who has been the most valuable player. Some feel that Thurman Munson up till now has been the most valuable player. Others talk about Lou Pinella. The pitch to Munson, looped, short left center. Reggie Smith cannot get it. Base hit. The first hit of the ball game took it on the hands and shoveled it to short left center. Reggie Jackson. However, Tom, should Gullet come through with a performance today similar to the one he registered in the opening contest, it would certainly merit very serious consideration. Definitely have to have some consideration. I think what, talking about Thurman Munson, your point's well taken, Howard, that what a hitter does is very obvious, but what Munson has done the last couple of days, there's a purpose pitch. <laughs> That's a greeting. Yeager will go right up after this pitch. This could have been straight a pickoff play at first base. Let's get out of my territory there, big boy. High to center. Smith lost it for a moment, now finds it. And gloves it. And so the Yankees. Once in singles, dies at first. After one half inning of play, there is no score. Quickly setting the New York Yankees defensively, Lou Pinella in left field, play of the series yesterday, up above the wall to Rob Say. Center field, Mickey Rivers, the quick one. Over in right field for the Yankees, chatting for the umpire there is Reggie Jackson. Moving to the inside defense, Greg Nettles feeling very good today, he said. His shoulder doesn't hurt him at all. At third base, shortstop is Bucky Dent. He's been very steady in the series. Over at second base, it'll be Willie Randolph, who is also been very steady. At first base, Chris Chambliss, emphasizing the point the Yankees are yet to err in the 77 World Series. And back of the plate, the man we were talking about a moment ago, who's been brilliant in handling the Yankee pitchers, Thurman Munson, and on the mound, left-hander Don Gullett, who was so impressive in the opener, though he did not get a decision, he was a flamethrower personified. He will pitch to Davey Lopes and Bill Russell and Reggie Smith. Here in the bottom of the first inning, Ron Say, the cleanup man, Steve Garvey. Batting fifth, Dusty Baker will follow him. Then comes Lee Lacey, Steve Yeager, and Don Sutton. Davey Lopes stands up. He has one hit in 15 trips to the plate. That the home run over the center field fence yesterday. A day in which the Dodgers have got to get off the back foot and take whatever they can get. Tom, it might be appropriate right along here in the first inning to discuss the fork ball, the way Gullet throws it, how hard he throws it, what the action is. Ball two. Well, opening up game number one over in, in Yankee Stadium, I was calling his, his uh, fork ball a curveball. It's very, it was difficult for me to tell up here, and then I talked to him afterwards about his curveball. He says, I didn't throw a curveball. Those were all fork balls. He's got a darn good one, and the action that, that's his fastball, but the action will look like a curveball. From up here, it looked like a curveball. Davey Lopes, in his last two games, has started the ball game with a walk and then stolen second base. And now he is 3-0 and with Don Gullick. There's a strike. Do you remember in game one, Gullick got off with control problems in the first inning as well? He often does that. The time to get Gullick, if you're going to get him, is early. Ball is hit well to left. Pinella going to the corner, going to the corner, going back. Can't get it. It's off the screen. Oh, it's around second. Going for three. Rivers comes across to help. A throw at third base. Triple. That ball carried on Pinella. 
He didn't think it was going as far as he did. We told you yesterday about the way the ball jumps out of here in the daytime. What? The very tippy top of the gate he going have into the bullpen. He had a miracle yesterday. Couldn't quite get to that one. But he hit the rail at the top of that gate. Uh, that must have missed a home run probably by two inches. No more than that. But he went back hesitantly. Did you notice, Tom? Thinking perhaps that he had it under control or at least well with the sky you him. know with the sky the That's bright the sky etc it could be very difficult to judge out there Billy Russell ah the ball one so Lopes triples Russell takes high up around the peak of the cap Thurman Munson to the mound Billy Martin out of the dugout that's the most life that I've heard out of the Dodger fans since we've been here Keith you notice that they've been rather complacent the last couple of days should recall too though the other night in Yankee Stadium, Gullet, when he was missing the strike zone, generally was missing it high and away. So the youngster, the farm boy from Kentucky now, got a boa's neck against Bill Russell. First game of the series, Russell tripled off of him to deliver Lopes with the first run of the series. Russell hits it foul, out of play. Trying to go to right with it, looked like, as he's choked up on his bat. They're giving Bill Russell virtually all of right center field. Jackson is well over toward the right line and you can see that there's just an enormous amount of space out there. You know, that's odd right too, center. Keith, because the last couple of days he looked like he's been trying to hit the ball to right field mm -hmm. too. Pitch is outside. It's two balls and one strike. The last two pitches, they're pitching him away. It's funny that Mickey would be over that far in center field. Lopes at third. Nobody out. Russell and Gullet dueling here. The count is two and one. Swing and a miss. It's two and two. He is really struggling. Russell is really struggling. He threw his bat a couple times yesterday. This must be the fourth ball. The way it goes down like that, it looks like a curveball or a slider, but that's his fourth ball. It's been a very effective pitch for Gullet. Russell is two for 18 in the series. Hits the ball to left field. Base hit. Baby Lopes canters home. Dodgers lead 1 nothing. Well, Russell hit that one on the nose. Right up in his eyes. That's what the Dodgers need to get these two little guys going. That guy right there, Davy Lopes. And you'll see Bill Russell. He's got a high pitch right up in his eyes. It's a good swing at it. See, that's going to help his confidence to know that he's got, you know, get out of that slump. He's got a base hit to lead off the game. Action in the Yankee bullpen very quickly. Martin wants to contain the score. Dick Tidro, right hander. Batter, Reggie Smith, four for 14. Russell off first, pitch high and outside. Tidro, Dick Tidro in the Yankee bullpen. Warming up. Dodgers trying to get after Don Gullett here in the bottom of the first. They tapped him for two runs in the opening game at Yankee Stadium. Smith hits it on the ground toward third. Nettle's got to hurry. Good play by Greg Nettle. Barehanding it. Boy, that is a super play. Barehanded. Reggie can run. He just made an outstanding play. Number nine for the Yankees, Greg Nettle. Gets a good charge in on this ball. Got to take it off his right foot. Boom, take it off the right foot and you take one more step and throw. That's how Brooks Robinson teaches it right there. And he doesn't make it any better than that. That was a great play by Nettles. And Greg is a great defensive third baseman. It's like Willie Mays said in 1954 when he made the catch and throw on words. He said it wasn't the catch, it was the throw. And that's about what it was right there. Now with one out and Bill Russell at second base, here is Ron Say. Three for 14 with one home run. Low. Low. Two balls and no strikes to say. Foul. That's two another high fastball. Foul. It's two and two with one out and one on and one in. That was a 93 mile an hour fastball. Low. Three balls, two strikes to Ron Say. 
three and two. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. Two out for the Dodgers. Batting good. This is a 3-2 pitch of first base open, and Steve Garvey on deck. You don't know whether you're going to get a fastball or a fork ball, and it looked like a fork ball to me. A lot of that same action that a curveball or a slider would have, and say was right over the top of it. And Garvey is up now with Russell still at second and two down. Garvey, five for 16. Describe how the fork ball is held, how it's delivered, Tom. Well, you just spread your fingers and kind of shove the ball right in between them and the thumb is used on the bottom of the ball as a guide. There's one right there. The amazing thing about Gullet's fork ball is the velocity he gets on. Throws it as hard as I guess I was talking to Sparky the other day about this Sparky Anderson the manager of the Cincinnati Reds and said Gullet throws the fork ball as hard as any anybody that he knows that has ever thrown one. Inside, one ball and one strike to Steve Garvey. It's going to be kind of tough getting a picture inside that glove to see what he's throwing. That's why they have that thing to hide that ball before you release it. Foul, and the bat goes to the Dodger dugout. Keith, you know, Garvey's got five hits in the World Series and still has only one RBI, and that RBI coming on the home run that he hit off Sparky Lyle in New York. The reason he's not getting those RBIs, those guys up in the top of the lineup have not been on base for him. Really amused at Garvey's bat, apparently, flying into the Dodger dugout. We haven't had one big dominant hitter getting on base all the time as you do in certain World Series. For instance, in 68, Lou Brock got 13 hits. Cardinals in 64. Bobby Richardson got 13 hits for the Yankees. Bobby got 11 in the 1960 World Series, which the Yankees lost to the Bucks in the seventh game. That was the Mazeroski home run game. We haven't had that kind of single hitter yet. 1-2 pitch, Garvey. Swings and misses and strikes out. So Gullett gets in trouble, but he bears down to fans. Say and Garvey, Dodgers settle for one run on two hits, lead after one, one nothing. St. Louis got by Philadelphia. Now to Chris Shambliss. Strike one from Don Sutton. Greg Nettles will follow, then Lou Pinella. Fourth man would be Bucky Dent, the Yankee first baseman. Dodgers lead 1-0 here in the top of the second inning. Don Sutton Whoa. has had so much noise about him. Uh, you expect a lot of looking at the baseball if he's successful today. Arguments being that he scuffs it somehow, but nobody knows how, and Sutton loves it because that plants a seed of doubt. Well, let's talk about a spitter, Keith. Well, that's all right. <laughs> Chambliss hits it hard, but right at Lopes. And Davey Lopes throws him out. On Bad June 8th, number Don Sutton was thrown out of a game by umpire Bruce Froming as they got into a big uproar over Froming's insistent inspection. And they had a few words, and Don was gone. Batter now, Greg Nettles. It's two for 13 in the series. And for the first time today, said that he feels good and fouls that one away. Hits it toward Garvey. Steve has it. Will do it himself. Two down. Nettles ground him to the first baseman. Now here comes Lou Pinella, who is six for 15, one run batted in, and a marvelous play yesterday defensively in left Number field. 14. Dick Hauser coaching at third for the Yankees, Bobby Cox at first. Lou Pinella with a 3.30 average in 1977 on 112 hits, hits it a mile high to the infield, and Davey Lopes. The second baseman waves everybody away and makes the catch. And Don Sutton gets the Yankees in order in the top of the second inning. So after one and a half innings of play, the Dodgers lead the Yankees one to nothing. For the Los Angeles Dodgers in the bottom of the second inning, we will see Dusty Baker, Lee Lacey, and Steve Yeager with the pitcher, the fourth man. Dusty Baker, three for 16 with a home run. 
the home run accounting for his three runs batted in. In the first inning, Tom, Gullett 25 pitches, Sutton 18 pitches in two innings. Gullet threw a lot of pitches in the first inning, and sometimes that's a blessing in disguise if you're a little tight when you go to the mound in the first inning. Sometimes throwing a whole bunch of pitches that first inning gets you loose. Mm -hmm. He works now to Baker. All low. Lopes triple to lead the game, bringing a smile to Tom Lasorda's face as Russell singled him home for the run, and Russell died at second as Say and Garvey struck out swinging. There's the strike. It's one and one to Baker. 93 miles an hour, Ron Guidry in the dugout with Yogi Berra there and the other Yankees. As Baker goes to the right side and is fouled into the crowd. Oh, we almost had somebody fall out of that upper deck. Woo! He reached over that fellow in blue, and I thought for a minute he was gone. Mm. A couple of empty seats, too. Somebody must have hung up because this is a game you wouldn't want to miss. It's one and two to Baker, and it's high, 2-2. Two, two. 93 miles again. Speed is consistent. High fly ball. Center field for Mickey Rivers. Got it. One down. Batting seven. Number 34. Right. Downtown Los Angeles on a Sunday. You can call it smog if you like. What Those would you of us call who it? live here call it haze. Shot left field, base hit. Lacey hits it sharply through the hole. All Greg Nettles could do is flag at it. That's the first pitch that they've gone inside in quite a while. Went, every pitch to Baker was away. Thurman wanted all the pitches to Baker outside. Finally made a good pitch when he popped up to Rivers in center field. That's the first pitch in about 15 pitches that he's gone back inside, and it was a base hit right in the hole. Now Lacey at first with one out, and Yeager, Steve Yeager, 4 for 14 with a home run. And again, the home run accounting for his only run batted in. We'll have a look at Lacey. He studies gullet, whether or not he might go. Ball is hit to right, short right. It will be the second baseman, Randolph, as it hangs there, and he goes just in behind first base on the line to make the catch. Two down. That is it. Number 20. Pitcher, Don Sutton. Here comes Don Sutton to the plate now with Lacey at first and two down. Dodgers are leading one nothing. Lopes tripled. Russell singled him home. The Yankees lead the series three games to one. Must time for the Dodgers. And there is a fastball strike. Strike two. Swing and a miss. And the Dodgers are gone. They get a single from Macy, can't move them around. After two complete innings of play, Los Angeles won, New York nothing. You can see by these numbers that most of the scoring in this World Series has been done in the early innings. And the run posted by Los Angeles to lead one nothing gives them the slight edge and the total run scored 15 to 14. Now it is Bucky Dent, the Yankee shortstop. Don Gullett, the pitcher, the top of the order, Mickey Rivers. Bucky Dent with a chance to get his first World Series ring here. Says it'll mean more than anything else because that he'll keep forever. Up the middle, Reggie Smith, there. Ball hit well, but on the line to Smith. One down. Batting man. Here's Don Gullett up for the first time today as Don Sutton now has retired five Yankees in a row after Munson's single. Ball won the count to Gullett. One and one. Fouled out of play. The count is one and two. A 
Another shirt sleeve day in Los Angeles. Howard munching away on a picnic lunch. Good. Barbara Sinatra sent it up. <laughs> One two count on the Yankee pitcher. Got it. Two down. So he begins second time around on the Yankee lineup, does Mr. Sutton. Look at that pitch. Roll off the table, didn't it? All he's allowed is a bloop single to center by Thurman Munson. Don has had some trouble this past summer with his curveball sliding or sailing on him hanging up in there and a lot of people have jumped on it that one went right down off the table the way he wants it. Mickey Rivers four for 20 swings and misses he's got an unusual grip for his curveball he, he, which they're saying at third base sneaking up on Mickey Rivers puts the fingernail of his index finger into the ball hit toward Davy Lopes at second base Throws him out, and Sutton gets the Yankees in order for the second straight inning after two and a half innings of play at Dodger Stadium. Los Angeles won, New York nothing. Davy Lopes had a triple and scored the only run of the ball game. That Washington six to nothing lead over Dallas is surprising, but Dallas is explosive. Up the middle it goes on the line. Mickey Rivers got to back up a little bit and flags it. And he almost he, let it get away from him. He really did. Once again, Lopes hits a ball that carries further than the outfielder thought it would. Difficult yeah. sun. High Rumble. sky and a bright sun in the outfield at all positions. As the day wears on, right field becomes more difficult. Well, we're going to have a little time out on the field here. They play beach Band ball in the stands, and they, that thing has come all the way from down the left field line, and it finally escaped and got out, and I'm afraid they've lost it. <laughs> the pitcher has a bad game. You'll say that his fastball look about that big to the hitters. <laughs> oh, to throw that back up for a long time out. Bill Russell fouls the pitch to the screen. Strike one. Russell. To Dent. Got a good bounce and throws him out. Nice play by Bucky Dent going well to his left. He got rid of that ball awfully nicely, which was left very well. ABC's Monday Night Football, Cincinnati Bengals and the Pittsburgh Steelers tomorrow night, 9 Eastern Time, 6 Pacific, 8 Central. And that's another put up game, isn't it? In that contest between Cincinnati and Pittsburgh. That's a brutal division, that central division of the American Football Conference. Cleveland with its rebuilt team, so tough. Pittsburgh, Houston can give it to you. Reggie Smith swings and misses and has a count of two strikes. And Cincinnati has the personnel to be a powerhouse. Despite two early season setbacks by the Browns and the Chargers. One ball and two strikes. Ball blocked by Thurman Munson. Sort of a quiet moment in this ball game. Sort of like waiting for the fuse to burn on down. 2-2. Two -two. Check swing roller. Pass Gullet. Bucky Dent. Got him. Don Gullett's all right. Bounced on his tummy. Comes up. He's okay. Score after three innings of play. Dodgers won. Yankees nothing. Willie Randolph, Thurman Munson, Reggie Jackson for the Yankees in the top of the fourth inning. A ball game that is sailing along. Randolph checks on a breaking pitch outside. Sutton has allowed New York one hit through three innings. The Dodgers have one run on three hits. Randolph, fly ball to center field, first time up. That pitch is just low. Two balls, no strikes. In the game so far, Yankees have not been able to get the leadoff man aboard. The only hit by Thurman Munson after two were out in the top of the first inning. That ball is stroked to center, but Reggie Smith had him well played, and he's got one out. Thurman Munson. Now here comes the Yankee captain and catcher, 
There's the history we talked about in the pregame show, the magnitude of the Dodgers' task. The Dodgers have history going against them just three times as the team come in the seven-game World Series from a deficit of three games to one to win it. I point out for Thurman Munson that he has played in nine World Series games and he has hit safely in all of them. In the 1976 series against Cincinnati, 529 had nine singles. Pitch from Sutton is upstairs. Ball one. Old Scrap Iron is just a player. You can't get him out of there. He does have the tender leg you talked about. If he had his druthers, he'd be home in Canton, Ohio, and in bed resting. <laughs> Reggie Jackson on deck. Get on the ground to Bill Russell at shortstop. Pounded it right on down that line and took a hard slam on the first base bag with a sore right Ready. leg. Jackson. Made Russell throw the ball. Sutton, out. Sutton is just breezing, Tom. Just breezing. He's breezing and he's been behind the hitters, too. He was behind Munson, one ball, no strike. Behind Randolph, 2 0. Oh. He was behind Bucky Dent. He comes back and gets easy outs, even though he's behind in the count. And that's unusual. That, you can't keep doing that against good hitters. It's going to catch up with you. You've got to stay ahead of your hitters. We made that point in the first game. Got to come inside to Jackson. He does, but he's high. Ball one again. Sooner or later, it catches up with you. You just can't do it on the major league level. Continually pitch behind hitters. Swing and a miss. It's one and one. Reggie, musing in a moment of quiet, says that he will donate half of his World Series share to a worthy cause in New York City. Did not define it. Half of it will go to charity. Swing and a miss. He was late on it. One and two. They're throwing the ball right by him. That's what he said in the pregame show. That fastball, high and tight. Hard stuff up and in. Reggie put some show on the batting practice. He must have hit 15, 20 balls into that pavilion in right field. That's the wow. fastball that he doesn't get around on. That's the pitch that Rick Roden didn't throw yesterday. Roden gave him a breaking ball, and boom, there it is. I was talking to Steve Yeager this morning, and he said that Roden, he called for a fastball. Roden shook him off, gave him a couple brushes on the pant leg, went right to the curveball before he could. Steve wanted to call timeout. He didn't want that pitch. Broke his bat. Short right field. Lacey gets there. Retires the Yankees in order for a third successive inning after three and a half innings of play. Dodgers won nothing. Dodger dugout Tom Lasorda and Tommy Run. John were standing there for a moment or two visiting. John with his arm around Tom's shoulder. Even though they're backed up against the wall, there doesn't appear to be all that much anxiety through the ranks. They're just going to do the best you can and be done with it. Great. I remarked the other night, they're a curious ball club in face of the fact that they seem so placid of temperament, passionless. Very quiet in the clubhouse. I was down there this morning talking to Jaeger and a few of the guys. Very quiet in there. You know. Once the game gets started, it's just, you know, you have a place to release your tension. Ron Say leading off, swings and misses for strike one. Steve Garvey to follow and then Dusty Baker. The Yankees are never placid. Maybe that's what makes them go. Maybe they can't play if they don't have that controversy. Ooh. Maybe Jackson can. That's one of the few times that Gullett has gone back inside. Now, the last time he did it was to Lee Lacey. He gave up a base hit, and this time he goes in off the plate. He comes in off the plate with a fastball. Move Ron Say out of there. He'll probably go right back outside now. Moved him emphatically. Dodge is looking to build up this one-run lead, of course. The Yankees desperate to contain it to one run because they've been able to do nothing with Sutton who's allowed but one hit a blooper to center in the first inning by Thurman Munson Sutton by the way as you know Keith has five career one hit games placing him in pretty special company with Mordecai Brown Grover Cleveland Alexander and Jim Maloney never the no no though three two High fly ball, left field, Pinella going to the corner. He's got room, just barely. Oh, boy. 
Well, there's this, this grunt of Ronnie Say right there. He got robbed yesterday by Pinello. That time he got just just a little bit. He got jammed. Didn't quite hit. That's the shortest part of this ballpark to hit the ball. He hit the ball good yesterday. Single, double, and got robbed of a home run. Steve Garvey now comes to the plate. Here's the 3 2 pitch to Garvey. Baker waiting. Strokes it to right center field. Jackson, a long way to go, can't get it. It'll go through to the wall. Bangs off the wall. Garvey will go into second standing with a double. Base hit number four. That's a typical Steve Garvey hit. Right. The Dodger fans coming to life here at Dodger Stadium. Beautiful thing to watch Garvey stroke the ball with that kind of power to the opposite field. He's a right with a pitch. He's got exceptional power to the right center field alley. There he goes. He can hit the ball out that way. There's no question he's got the base hit. They're playing Steve DePole a little bit in center field, but he's got excellent power out there in the right center. Reggie played it well on the first ricochet and his strong throw. Garvey standing at second double. One out. Here is Dusty Baker. At a fly ball to center field, his first time up. Strike on the inside corner. How much information could Garvey pass to Baker from second base? Depends on whether Dusty wants it or not. There are a lot of hitters that will not want to know the pitch at home plate. Right? Other hitters will. Garvey could give him a sign. He could tuck at his shirt, tuck at his belt. Let him know if he's got a pitch. Shot left field, base hit. Garvey pumping around. Preston Gomez sending him to the plate. Vanilla drops the ball in left field. Dusty Baker dives at second. He's safe. by Baker. Looked like he was going to be out. But Dusty coming in on his stomach. Got the hand in there first. He got Looked there all right. Clearly a good call by the umpire. Steve Garvey on second in the fourth with a double and the Dodgers leading one to nothing. <laughs> Dusty Baker slams the ball to left and Garvey scores while Pinella's error. The first for the Yankees in the series allows Baker to hustle in the second. Great slot is up in the Yankee bullpen. Lacey is at the plate for the Dodgers. 2 0 Los Angeles. Outside corner. Jitro was up in the first inning. Now he's working again in the bottom of the fourth. Tom, you talk about catching up with a pitcher with the number of pitches Gullett's thrown this early in the game. It was inevitable. Late on it. Two strikes. Fork ball. He went down fishing for it and couldn't find it. That is the first error by the Yankees in the World Series. Each team now with one and left fielders accounted for both. But one of the great things about the World Series is the type of defensive play we've had. It hasn't been a sloppy World Series at all, just the two errors. Munson setting up outside to Lacey. Gullet misses. It's one ball, two strikes. Lacey pulls it toward the hole. Nettles can't handle it. Now he picks it up and it's no play. Baker at third. Saw this Yankee defense, which hadn't made a single error of commission in the entire series going into today. And that's been one of the high points in the series, that Yankee defense. Suddenly, two errors in a row. One by Pinella in left field, and now one by the usually impeccable Nettles. Baker was on his way to third, thought better of it, couldn't see the ball as it skittered behind Nettle, apparently, and then had to get on back to second base. Now you see Dusty sitting up there. Now lose his side of the ball for just a moment. Gullet induces Lee Lacey to hit the ball to Nettles, who boots it after making several stunning plays earlier. And everybody's safe. And Greg blocking it. That 
So the Dodgers now with one out have runners at first and at second. The error was on the third baseman Nevin. Ball bounced up at Greg. Here comes Billy Martin running out to talk with Dullett. Dullett walking Todd Martin. Steve Yeager, the Dodger catcher, is the batter. Kedro is in the Yankee bullpen, and I must pay homage to our producer Chuck Howard, Jet Forty, our director, and our fine four of cameramen, because they have done an outstanding job in documenting and providing the replays. Gullet, the Chief Gullet has really thrown an incredible number of pitches. He stays in the ball game. Billy comes trotting off. Munson's coming back to position. He's thrown 78 pitches, 25 in this inning alone. We're only in the fourth inning. 1-1 one, one to Yeager. Low, 2-1. Sutton, the pitcher, on deck. Dusty Baker at second base. Lee Lacey at first base. The Yankees have committed two errors in this inning. The first two for them. Back there. Oh, the long awaited explosion by the Dodgers in their home ballpark. And look at those fans. Yanker, a three run home run, and the Dodgers lead now five for nothing. from a lot of pitches. The ball's right down the middle of the plate. The same kind of pitch he threw to Dusty Baker. And there's no doubt about that one. That one was way back there. With a hit in those seats and went into the bullpen. Just in that last edge of seats before the bullpen starts. When Steve Yeager tidally parks a high gullet fork ball into the left field corner, the route is on. This is the kind of command these fans have come to expect of their Dodgers. And oh, how they did savor it, both in the stands and on the field. Crowd is standing, wanting Baker to come up out of the dugout. They want Steve Yeager out Yeager, there. And yes, Yeager, and Yeager came away. Yeager's and putting his gear on. There's Gary Grody. That was the... Yacking with Steve Yeager. That was the big raw you heard. Steve getting away. There he is. Now he comes down. Come up now. Look at that. That's become something of a tradition throughout baseball. In this season, it's been happening a number of times. So with a 5 nothing lead, the Los Angeles Dodger pitcher, Don Sutton, is at the plate. With a count of two strikes. He's got to be feeling pretty good, Mr. Sutton. You spent a lot of years never getting a five-run lead, Tom. Don is gone in a hurry. That's two out. And we'll have the top of the order, maybe low. Davey Lopes in the ball game has tripled and scored a run. Hit a liner to Mickey Rivers in center field. First time in the series, the Dodgers have generated offense in the middle innings. There's a strike from Don Gullett. But again, it was Baker and Lacey and then Yeager. Boom. And, and Lopes singles it up the middle. Rivers plays it in, and Baby Lopes is now two for three in the ball game, and they are tattooing Don Gullet. He's two for three, but Davey hit the ball hard all three times. Only Martin squinting out toward the field, making no move at this point. Satisfied, Tom Lasorda. Five nothing, Dodgers with two out, nobody on, and. 
I beg your pardon, Davey Lopes on it first, and Bill Russell up there, who singled Lopes home at the first run of the ball game and then grounded out to short his second time. Davey Yeager, his second home run of the World Series. Big strong Dodger catcher had dinner last night with Thurman Munson. Two catchers. Get back to the pitcher, Gullet. He throws out Russell. It is a big inning for the Los Angeles Dodgers. Four runs across to lead 5 nothing after four complete innings. Don Gullet, not a happy young man at this moment. First pitch to Chambliss. Ball. Don Sutton to Chris Chambliss. Then Greg Nettles and Lou Vanella with Bucky Dent, the fourth man. Sutton with a one-hitter. Through four innings, we're now in the top of the fifth. There, it is a two-hitter as Shamper singles sharply to right field. He got that ball up. Well, I want to reiterate what I said last inning: that you can't pitch behind to these guys. You get behind them, one and zero, two and zero, and they can sit on a pitch. And if they get the pitch, that's exactly what's going to happen. Even if you do make a good pitch, a hitter ahead of you in the count, you're not going to be as effective as a pitcher. Sutton had retired ten Yankees in a row. First time in the ball game that New York has had the leadoff man on. Batter now, Greg Nettles. Rounded to the first baseman, Garvey, first time up. High and away, ball one. Crowd today, 55,955. The total attendance, then for the five games, 281,319. Pitches outside and high for ball two. So he's behind again, as Tom Seaver has pointed out. One of the reasons probably Billy Martin stayed with Gullet the way he did was the fact that the Yankee defense, for the first time in the series, contributed to the Dodger attack. High to right center. Outfielders, it is Reggie Smith finding it up in the bright sky and making the catch for out number one. The players pool based on the first three games of the league championship series and the first four games of the World Series as you see the numbers on today's pitchers the richest in World Series history two million four hundred twenty five thousand dollars plus so the player share will be handsome. Three balls and two strikes now to Lou Pinello. Shambliss edges off first. Here he goes. Get on the ground of the third baseman, Ron Say. Looks at second, no play there. Goes to first, Padella's out, two down. Shambliss at second as Bucky Dent comes to the plate for the Yankees. Dodgers leading 5 nothing. Yankees batting top of the fifth. Ball is hit to left. Baker. Yankees get a base hit, their second of the ball game. Can't move him around. Dodgers lead 5 0, middle of the fifth inning. Here's a look at one of those plays that uh, Dusty Baker, in this particular instance, is so thankful that it didn't quite work out to the disadvantage of him. You see him coming in, and then he has to reach well up to flag down that shot hit by the Bucky Dent. Again, like he was playing in the NFL, didn't he? <laughs> yeah. well, again, it's a case of the carry on the ball here. Reggie Smith, Ron Say, Steve Garvey for Los Angeles against Don Gullett. And Reggie Smith today has grounded to third, grounded out to short, 0 for 2. Dodgers lead 5-0, batting in the bottom of the fifth inning. Foul. The big blow in the ball game. Three run homer by Steve Yeager. Yankees having committed two errors in the bottom of the fourth inning. One of the runs unearned. The other four earned. One of the reasons that Gullet has arm problems, I believe, he throws on such a stiff leg. There's the uh, bullpen, Kenny Clay and the Yankee bullpen. Outstanding the other night in New York. Yes, he was. You watch Gillard, he pitches with st very stiff legs, the bottom half of his body. He just no resiliency whatsoever from his legs, and he, he throws almost totally with his arm and throws almost across his body. And he, and he gets his right leg over in front of his left leg. 2-2 Two -two pitch is fouled away. How does that compare with your new motion as described by Johnny Bench, Tom? 
Only slightly different. <laughs> Here's the slow mo of him. You'll see him. You watch his legs, and as he plants his right leg, comes down. It's very stiff down below. Boom. It's almost like a catapult. He whips that arm around. And that, if your legs don't absorb some of the pressure of pitching, it's got to go someplace. And it will be accumulated in your shoulder or your elbow. And that's where you come up with arm problems. And he's had it. Three and two now to Reggie Smith. Playing center field for the Los Angeles Dodgers. High. Walking. Phones are ringing. Yogi Berra talking to the bullpen probably right there. Throw 96 pitches so far. This is going to be his last inning. You get on the phone to the bullpen to get somebody else out. Of I mean up in the bullpen. Billy would like him to get out of this inning without having to use somebody else because obviously he's going to pinch hit for him. Bullard is the leadoff hitter for the Yankees in the top of the sixth. But a count of ball one on Ron Say. Steve Garvey on deck and Reggie Smith on first, having walked there. We might have a little something going on here, too. Yes, sir, there it is. Smith going, ball hit to right. Reggie Jackson chasing it. Loves it. And Smith has to hustle to get back to his first base. Good play, good hustle by Reggie Jackson. There was some white showing when he flagged it down. Mm -hmm. He's had his adventures out in right field this year. Tough play, looking right up into the sun. Steve Garvey now, who doubled and scored, was at the top end of the four-run outburst by the Dodgers in the bottom of the fourth inning. His double to right center set it off. Baker shot one down the left field foul line. Pinello with an error played a single into a single plus an extra base. Ball is hit to right. That's going to fall for a base hit. Reggie Smith heading around second, going to third. Reggie Jackson's throw, good strong throw. It comes back into Randolph, and Reggie Smith stops at third. Single He's got a right hand hitter hitting the right field, as you will see in the big legs. He did it again. Hits the ball where it's pitched. Out comes Martin. This is it. Don Gullett. He just simply goes to right field. He probably had his mind made up before the day began that he was going to try and take Don Gullett to right field. A lot of good hitters will do that. Especially when the ball club is having trouble getting base hits, as the Dodgers have been the last couple of games. Reggie made good hustle, got over behind that ball, made a good strong throw, kept Reggie Smith at third. So Don Gullett is gone from the ball game after throwing 99 pitches, five runs, scored against him, time is up. The preceding message on behalf of Major League Baseball. Now Ken Clay. He is on with Mike Torres up in the bullpen for New York. Clay, in game number two, pitched three innings of hitless baseball. He walked one for the Yankees. So the youngster, at 23 years of age, gets a chance from Lynchburg, Virginia, his second World Series appearance. And Dusty Baker at bat for the Dodgers, pounds it up into the club level. One and two pitch to Baker. Hit sharply in the hole. Flag down by Dent. No play on it. Smith scores. Six nothing Dodgers. Base hit for Baker. So the Dodgers are really pouring it on the Yankees today. They're backs to the wall. Down three games to one. Trying to make sure right here in the middle innings that they cement this ball again. And they appear to be in the process of doing just that. The lead is now six to nothing. With Steve Garvey at second base, Dusty Baker at first base, Lee Lacey the batter. High and away, ball one. Lacey has a single, got a board of an error, was on base when Yeager hit the three run home run. Center field. That should produce another run. As Steve Garvey turns at third and comes to the plate, Dusty Baker stops at third. It is seven to nothing, Dodgers. Well, I don't know what Tommy Lasorda told his ball club before the game. He said he had that 10 minute meeting with him. Whatever he did, it must have worked. They've really come out smoking today. Ten hits and seven runs already. Putting it all together, the Yankee pitching, which had been the dominant factor in the series up till now, crumbling. Now it 
batter Steve Yeager, who had the three-run home run in the bottom of the fourth. Up here in the bottom of the fifth. Lacey off first, Baker off third. Yeager hits it out into left center, and it is Mickey Rivers to make the catch. Baker tags, trots home. Dodgers lead eight to nothing. with four runs batted in today as Baker scores on that sacrifice fly to Mickey Rivers in left center field. The batter will now be Don Sutton. Yeager's like Garvey coming into the game. They both had one home run, yet each of them only had one RBI. With two out, a strike to Sutton. Lacey on first base. Beats it over the pitcher's head. Willie Randolph has a play. Sutton jogging along toward first. Didn't want to get all heated up. Dodgers jumping out to a big, big lead. Three more runs. Lead now eight to nothing. Now some defensive changes for the Los Angeles Dodgers. Glenn Burke, number three, is now in center field. Reggie Smith has now moved over to his more normal position, right field, and Lee Lacey is out of the lineup. There's Reggie in right, and that's the tough sun field right now. Batting for the Yankee pitcher, Clay, George Zeber. I must say, there's been nothing wrong with Smith's play in center field, although he's played there only once before this year. He had played the position in Boston, and he looked quite at home in it, Tom. Reggie's now standing out to switch it. It's strong. There's the Yankee bullpen. Tidwell warming up. He'll be next as Sutton delivers, and it's fouled away by Zebra. The count is one and one. With an eight-nothing lead, Don Sutton now is in the position where he can quit being too fine. Bring it in. Just lay it in there. Let them hit. Huge lead. Foul ball. Eight-nothing Los Angeles. Sutton allowed only two hits so far. He comes high with that pitch, and it's two and two. He keeps throwing it high and keeps falling behind. He's bound to get a visit pretty soon from Red Adams, perhaps even Tom Lasorda. Struck him out. He wasn't trying to be too fine with that one. Blasted it in there. That's as good a fastball. Looks like he's had all day long. One down for Mickey Rivers. Nobody on. Rivers has grounded to Davy Lopes at second base twice. Yankees are going to have to start fighting with one another again. Too much harmony. <laughs> they got a plane ride home. <laughs> yeah, and maybe that'll do it. 2-1 to Rivers. Fly ball, center field. Glenn Burke looking for it. As you can see, he took a moment before he found it. Now this is the signal to Dusty Baker, huh? It's tough. Dodge has got some action today from Lopes and Russell. Yeager did get the big hit, but the top two brought the Dodgers to life. The Yankees, Rivers has not gotten on. Neither has Randolph. With two out, Willie is up, 0 for 2. In the sixth inning, or in the... Uh, fourth inning. He hit the ball with authority but right at Reggie Smith. A strike one. The Yanks are a corporate enterprise run by Steinbrenner and Gabe Paul and they're already planning for next season. Inside. Last night Gabe Paul had dinner with Brad Corbett, the owner of the Texas Rangers, later met with Bud Selig of the Milwaukee Brewers. Knowing Gabe, something's brewing. Ball is hit well to right center field. Reggie Smith and Glenn Burke going. It drops. Run together. Throw comes in. And Willie Randolph stands at second base. Number three in the hit column for the Yankees against Sutton. 
Looks like they're taking the Dodger tactics and hitting the ball the other way. A fastball right down the middle of the plate, right about shoulder high. Rivers, the hitter before Randolph, swung the two pitches out of the strike zone, and that looked like an American League strike. Randolph jumped right on it. That is also the second Yankee runner to get to second base in the ball game. Two out now for Thurman Munson. Munson, fly ball, center field, Glenn Burke. Davy Lopes, it's Lopes. Dick Tidrow with a record of 11 and 4 on the season in game number two. Tidrow with two and two thirds innings allowed three hits and no runs, struck out one, his second appearance, his second World Series. Obviously, he was involved last year. He'll be pitching to the top of the order. David Oaks, Bill Russell, and Reggie Smith. The Dodgers lead eight to nothing. They bat now in the bottom of the sixth inning. Lopes takes a curveball, sharp one for strike one. Davy has tripled, line to center, and single. Scored the first one of the game. Check swing roller. Pitcher gloves it. Tedro guns it and gets it. Good play by Tedro. If you wanted a measure of how good this Dodger team is and how they won the pennant the way they did in the playoff series against Philadelphia, their performance today bespeaks the fact. This is a team that was on the ropes, and they're having a field day with the Yankees. Instead of folding up and collapsing, they've come to the fore. Tomorrow night, of course, ABC's NFL Monday Night Football, two of the powerhouse teams of the league, Bengals against the Steelers. Week after, we're back here, Minnesota against the Rams. Bill Russell shoots one to right center field. And so his bat looks like it might be coming alive. His second base hit of the ball game. This whole team has come alive today, Keith. They weren't about to crumble. And they're not awed, obviously, by that history we spoke of. Only three times in seven-game World Series, a team coming from a three-to-one deficit to win. <laughs> Those are the Hardy boys. I think that's a good show for Tom Seaver to get a roll on. Are they my acting career? That's correct. One out, Russell at first base. Reggie Smith now goes back swinging left-handed against Dick Tiptoe and fouls the first pitch. Straight back for strike one. Here is Smith's power side. Matter of fact, you have contemplated an acting career in the future, haven't you, Tom? That's if you can mind me up with any of those friends you got in Hollywood, Hart. It's not hard. You can't miss. Strike two. Dick Tedro, who was a workhorse this past season, throwing at about 87 miles an hour. He started seven games, appeared in 49 games, pitched 151 innings. He had five saves. Two strike pitch to Smith. Hit deep to right center field. Goodbye. Rivers going back. It Goodbye. is gone. Oh, the Dodger team is bringing the ball to the second home run of the ball game. Twelfth hit of the ball game. Colossal 10 to nothing lead at this point. Yankee pitching the opposite of what it's been. How quickly it all can change. As it has for the Dodgers today. Here's Reggie, a low ball hitter, left handed. Ball right down about his knees, just above knee high, no question. When it left the bat, it was gone. There he is, Reggie Smith. Hit a monster of a home run in Yankee Stadium, but another one here today. The last couple of days, I've really been impressed with the Yankee pitching. I think it's really superb. And the thing today is the way the Dodgers have battled back. Going the three to one, they're down, their backs against the wall. They've come right back. With, they're burying the Yankees today, 10 to nothing. Ron Say at the plate. Bases are now clean with one out. Ronnie, 0 for 3. The pitch by Ted Rose, back one. The Dodgers have not been scoring in the middle innings in this series up until today. Four in the fourth, three in the fifth, two now in the sixth. 
Here's hit guard to left field. Vanilla just back and to his right and makes the catch. This crowd screams with every fly ball that's hit. Well, that little guy there hit enough during the year for it him to caused scream. them to scream. You're right. Yes, sir. I talked yes. yesterday about the transformation in this Dodger team in the recent years. Hello, Frank. Now they're a power team where they used to be a speed and pitching team. Garvey at the plate, struck out, doubled, and single. With two out. Garvey rolls it on the ground to Bucky Dent at shortstop. Throws him out. And so the Dodgers add two more runs in the bottom of the sixth inning. After six complete innings, 10 nothing, Los Angeles. And when Reggie Smith bruised Dick Tidrow in the sixth with a two-run blast, he put the final icing on what has become a daytime nightmare for the Yankees. But more never seemed to be enough for these Dodger Blue loyalists. Not even 10 to nothing. The line score on the ball game. As we go to the top of the seventh inning, the Dodgers 10 runs on 12 hits. The Yankees struggling with Sutton. He has a three hitter going to this time, the highest shutout score in World Series. 12 nothing Yankees over the Pirates in 1960. Last time we had a shutout in the World Series was game one 1975 and Luis Tiot beat Cincinnati 6 nothing on five hits. I remember yeah. the 12 nothing game vividly. That was another shutout for Whitey Ford. Earlier he had shut out the Bucks in the same World Series by this very score 10 to nothing. John Sutton pitching now to Reggie Jackson, Chris Chambliss, and Greg Nettle. If and you remember, John, I'm sorry, Keith, if you remember, John, that was the series when Stengel started Art Dittmar in the first game. Two and one. And he was roundly criticized by his own players for it, and they felt later that was what cost them the series. That, in fact, was not the case. The Yankees led in the final game. The Bucks caught them with a big home run by Al Smith and won it with a big home run by... They set for Reggie. Reggie Jackson breaking loose for the first time today as he singles to right center field and it'll bring up Chris Hampus. Nazarowski on a high pass ball from Ralph Terry. It was a great World Series. Chambliss one for two at a single his last time up in the fifth inning. Four hits now for New York. Shot to right, base hit, second in a row for Shambliss. Jackson turns at second. He's going to third to throw through. He's in there. Hey, one thing, Reggie Smith will take a shot at you. Both Reggie Smith and Reggie Jackson have good arms. They've got the ammunition to do it, too. Reggie not playing, uh, Reggie Jackson not playing conservatively, even though he's down 10 to nothing. Nobody out. Gave Reggie Smith a test going all the way from first to third. Back-to-back -back singles by the Yankees now, mounting a threat against Sutton. Dodger pen still quiet. Why shouldn't they be? Leading 10 to nothing. Here's Greg Nettles. <laughs> Foul. Straight back. Reggie Jackson at third. Chris Shambliss at first. Who says his share of the World Series going to go toward a new house and some new clothes for Audrey. Upper Saddle River, New Jersey. Audrey, his wife. Punch down the line, left field. Fair ball. Reggie Jackson scores. There goes the shutout. Ball picked up in the left field corner by Baker. Thrown into the plate. A couple of fans came down out of the stands trying to get a hold of it. I must First. say, Nettles hit that pitch beautifully, Tom. Right where he went with the pitch. Well, they've been pitching him tough. Greg, of course, a fastball hitter. Looked like an off-speed pitch just down on the outside corner. Just went with it. Even out of the strike zone, it looked like. But two strikes. He's protecting the plate. He's tried to pull everything. You'll see one of the couple of people come out of the stands at the camera stays trying to get a souvenir. They may get an escort out of the ballpark for that. They should. That's the first untoward incident I guess we've had here at Dodger Stadium. Here at Dodger Stadium. Elias Sosa gets up in the bullpen now. Yankees get on the scoreboard at 10 to 1 with Shambliss over at third. Nettles down at second. Lou Pinella loops it to right. Reggie Smith, a fine running catch. 
And Chambliss won't test it. <laughs> Beautiful play by Reggie Smith. Reggie sits that out there and said, I dare you, I dare you. You go ahead and try. Great He's got catch. a super arm in right field. A great catch and a super arm. That is the first out of the inning. Reggie makes a good play, and if the camera stays on him long enough, you'll see Reggie say, I dare you. Go ahead and try and score. Good running catch. He comes up and checks the runners, gets in throwing position. They didn't test it. Batter now is Bucky Dent. Foul at the plate. Elias Sosa is now joined by Lance Robson, left-hander. You don't test it when you're trailing by nine, I'll tell you. And Lasorda, leaving nothing to chance with two men working in the bullpen. Roy White, scheduled to hit for the pitcher. There's a strike. It's two strikes on Bucky Depp. One out, Nettles at second, Shambliss at third, Jackson is home. Yankees have two singles and a double in this inning. Yeager asks for help from the first base umpire. You can see John McSherry says no. It's one ball, two strikes. And of all the catchers in the league, I think probably Yeager get, asks first and third base umpires for more help than anybody else. It looked like it went around to me. Like he held up. Didn't break his wrist. His bat went through the strike zone, though. Get on the ground to Lopes. Chambliss comes in from third as the put out is made at first and it's 10-2 Dodgers. Bucky Dent going to the right side to get the man in from third base. Now here is Roy White. Roy White. 268 on the regular season for the veteran of the Yankee roster, Roy White. 0 for 1 as a pinch hitter in game number two of the World Series. Hits the ball to the left side of the infield for Bill Russell at shortstop. Makes the catch and the inning is over. But the Yankees peck away and get a couple of runs. Score now after six and a half, ten to two, Los Angeles. Frank's not singing. Frank Sinatra, Barbara. Everybody standing in the middle of the seventh inning. Most of them singing. Happy home crowd as the Dodgers lead by a score of 10 to 2, and Jim Catfish Hunter will be the fourth Yankee pitcher. Gullet started, still the pitcher of record. Clay, Tidrow, and now Hunter, and Tuesday night, 8 Eastern time, 7 Central, 6 in the mountains, and 5 in Pacific time. The Dodgers and the Yankees in game number 6. I'm semi-positive about that. With a 10-2 lead, the Dodger bullpen active. Jim Hunter is in now. He was shelled in game number 2 by the Dodgers. It's been a hard year for Catfish. Starting pitchers will needle each other quite a bit. Coach, I was down talking to the catfish in the deck out. I mean, in the locker room the other day, and I said, Cat, you got to get Billy to put you in there. That 19 point ERA doesn't look very good. You got to get in there and get a couple guys out, get it down to around eight or something. <laughs> He's got as good a sense of humor as anybody I've ever met. He really He's does. He's terrific. a completely professional human being. He's been one of the greatest pitchers of all time. His career may be far from over. He's young enough yet. He's had a difficult year. He is a so warmly regarded by Reggie Jackson that what happened to him the other day was what caused Jackson to sound off emotionally. But at the same time, Thurman Munson told us the catfish wasn't nearly as bad in what he was throwing as the record indicated. And one can only hope for the sake of a great, great performer that 
he can make it back. He will work to Dusty Baker, Lee Lacey, and Steve Yeager. Baker, a pair of singles, and he scored twice in three trips. First pitch from Jim Hunter is high for ball one. Stroke to left, base hit for Dusty Baker. He's three for four. As the viewers have come to learn by now, you, Tom Saber, a positive student of pitching, unlike many pitchers who just throw the ball. You have studied every aspect of your trade. But it doesn't stop there, folks. Tom submitted a paper in geology on the various kinds of infields in the major leagues, taking a sample from each and every one. An interesting paper, Tom. Very interesting. Interesting study I was doing for... Lee Lacy. Bouncer to Nettles, over to second. That's all. Ball almost popped out of Randolph's glove there. Saw a lot of white. The study I was doing for my degree at the University of Southern California, and we were entertained in pregame show by the University of Southern California marching Trojan band. What a thrill it was, too. Here's a change. Sparky Lyle there. What a beautiful mustache. Johnny Oates is coming to the plate for Los Angeles. The first appearance by Johnny Oates in this World Series. Johnny got to be happy about that. He was beginning to wonder if he was going to get a shot at it. Did not participate in the playoffs either as an active player in a game. 10 to 2, Los Angeles leading. At bat in the bottom of the seventh inning. And the first pitch to Johnny Oates. From Jim Hunter is high and away. With one out. What grade did you get on your geology paper, Tom? A flashing A. <laughs> Wrote a 35-page paper. Stroke in the center. Rivers coming. Gets it. Ball line to center field. No real wild swings today that we had seen in the past. It's been just put it up there and take it. It's exactly what Johnny Oates did. How did you wind up evaluating the infields? Well, what I did, Howard, I compared I took all the infields in the National League, compared them with my professional feelings and with a, an engineering firm in, in uh, New Jersey, and I felt the the grounds in front of home plate were hardest here in Los Angeles and in St. Louis and Pittsburgh. And then we brought back the analysis from the engineering firm. And they backed up what I felt as a professional, That's as a professional athlete. Don Sutton is at the plate. The count is one and one. We are told that Steve Yeager has a, an injury to his right leg. The degree of it, we don't know. Johnny Oates will replace him back of the plate. It's one ball and two strikes on Don Sutton. There's Johnny Oates. They don't want to lose Jaeger, obviously, for any remaining games. Jaeger leading both teams in RBIs. Foul. Two One. home runs in the series, a three-run blast today. One ball, two strike count of the Dodger pitcher. With two out. And Lee Lacey at first base. Strikes out. The bat goes skittering down the third baseline. Thurman Munson gives him the baseball. After seven complete innings of play, the Los Angeles Dodgers have ten runs. The New York Yankees have two runs. Back with more baseball after this word from our local station. Dodger Stadium. Some of the folks beginning to leave now and make their way toward their automobiles or whatever transportation might have brought them here. But their team leading, I guess some of the home folks figure they can go now and get ready for Sunday night dinner. Beautiful warm day in Los Angeles. 10-2 ball game. Mickey Rivers top of the order. Followed by Willie Randolph and Thurman Munson against Don Sutton. Outside. Lance Robson and Elias Sosa were up in the pin throwing for the Dodgers in the top of the seventh inning when New York broke through against Sutton for two runs. That pitch was high. Ball two now. Ball three. Three and one to Mickey Rivers. Interesting quiz on the board. He see that 14 pitchers have hit a home run in the World Series game. Last time it happened was exactly three years ago today. 
That pitcher's in uniform here. Who is he? As a strike three and two. I'd be guessing, I would say, uh, who was in the World Series three years ago? Athletics? Yankees, Reds last year, Red Sox, Boston the year before, and then Jim Hunter. Jim Catfish Hunter. The catfish, wouldn't it? Dusty Baker drifting Dusty back Baker. in left field and makes the catch for the first out. Randolph. Willie Randolph at the plate now with one gone and nobody on and a 10-2 Dodger lead. If it stays this way, Yankees will have a 3-2 edge going back to Yankee Stadium Tuesday night, 8 Eastern time for game number six. Right here on ABC. Low. Ronnie Say, where for the glove? Got it. Two down. A lot of noise in this ballpark today for the first time in three days. Why not? Ten to two. Herman Munson for the Yankees now. One for three. Thirteen six and hits. First errors in the series by the Yankees. They've stranded four men today. Munson hits it high and deep to left. Baker going, going way back, going, and it's gone. Sir. Home run, Munson. Munson having a couple of words with Sutton as he's running around the bases, too, it looked like, for one reason or another. I don't know why. Maybe it's a bit of humor. Sutton is doing a little smiling on the mound. He also knows that he's ahead by seven runs in the top of the eighth inning, too. Reggie. Two hits for Thurman on the day. He continues to hit in every game. What a solid athlete. Johnny Oates doing the catching, relieving Steve Yeager. Here is Reggie Jackson. Reggie had a home run with the bases empty yesterday for New York. They've now hit three in the World Series. There's a high Goodbye. drive deep to right. It. It's fair. It's fair. Hits the screen and hits the screen. The home oh, run, Jackson. Back-to-back -back home runs off Don Sutton, and it is now 10-4. That's the first time in this World Series that the Yankees have manifested the kind of power that carried them to the finish. Back-to-back -back home runs by their two biggest hitters. Now the deficit is trimmed to six runs on eight hits. Have for four runs, eight hits, trailed by six as Shamblis stands in there, and Chris can lose it. The biggest home run hitter, of course, has been Greg Nettles. He is not connected. But Greg hits in the 250s. Two out, two homers, 10-4. Outside, two balls, no strikes to Shamblis. Sounded like it broke his bat. Grounds it to Davey Lopes. Lopes throws him out. The inning is over. New York banging back. Hit a pair of home runs from Thurman Munson and from Reggie Jackson. Now, at the middle of the eighth inning, it is 10-4 Dodgers. Don Sutton surrenders two Yankee runs in the seventh, plus a two-out homer to Munson in the eighth. Determined to walk no one, Sutton serves up another fat pitch to Jackson, who jumps all over it for a vicious clout high off the foul pole screen and right. But hidden within the recesses of the Yankee debacle is another two for four performance by Reggie Jackson. What is even more significant, Jackson is now getting around in the ball after being late on pitches throughout the series. But who could ever imagine what all this portended? Tuesday night, 8 Eastern Time, Game 6. The Dodgers and Yankees from Yankee Stadium on ABC. There's back-to-back -back home runs by Munson and Jackson. Been done only eight times as Davey Lope steps up for the Dodgers to lead the bottom of the eighth inning. Grounds it to Nettles. Greg throws it out. One down. 
play wasn't as easy as it may have looked to some either. That was a tough hop for Nettles to handle. If you remember the error he made, perhaps a key play in that Dodger four-run rally as we look at it again. Watch this, Tommy. You'll see. Lopes yep. At the, Lopes at the ball hard, too. He looks at it, makes sure he has it. Ball's hit that hard. Third baseman knows he's got a lot of time, even with a guy like Davey Lopes running. The error he made was on a ball that apparently hopped higher than he thought it would, above his glove. Looks like the ball came up on him. This Dodger Stadium, sometimes you'll get bad hops once in a while. Well, you said it has the hardest infield. Your geological study established that. That is correct. Bill Russell is the batter now. Cliff Johnson is catching for New York. His first appearance in the World Series. Big, husky, right-handed power hitter himself. Ball one, Jim Hunter to Bill Russell. Russell today with a pair of base hits, threatening to break out of his slump. That pitch is low. It is ball two. Cliff Johnson, whereas uh, Steve Yeager and Munson have a relatively low target, Johnson is so big, he can't get too low. That's fouled away. You see that he has a much different technique behind the plate. He gets down on one knee, both Munson and Yeager using a squatting position, but... This is a pretty big boy. Look at him standing up there, 6'4", or whatever he is. Jolly big soul, man. too, thank goodness. He's a happy sort of a fellow. Fouled again by Russell. I have a feeling that Billy making as much contact as he's made today is going to be a... Supper's going to be much more palatable to him tonight. Yeah, he's a lot more aggressive for the bat, too. I mean, your confidence is a wonderful thing, and you get that first hit leading off the first time you get up in the ball game. It helps you throughout the entire contest. Yes, it's it ball hard too. Yes, sir. It's caught by Panella. Fine running catch by Lou Panella in left field for the second out. Even when you make an out, if you're swinging the bat well and you hit the ball hard, it, it does a lot for your confidence because he's been, you know, Billy's been having some weak ground balls and some bad pop-ups, and he hasn't been stinging the ball. There, he hit the ball good. He made an out, but still he hit the ball well. Now it is Reggie Smith who homered last time. High pop to the right side for Willie Randolph. Has it. And the inning is over. Jim Hunter gets the Dodgers in order in the bottom of the eighth inning. We have one inning left to play. Only half inning unless the Yankees come up with something big. Dodgers lead 10-4. To the top of the ninth inning. Don Sutton trying to go all the way and beat the Yankees in game five. To take it back to New York. 3-2, favor of the Yankees. He'll pitch to Greg Nettles, Lou Pinella, Bucky Dent, and then the pitcher spot. Nettles pops it foul back here. Oh. Everything's final. Dallas beating Washington 27-16. Miami edging the Jets. Giants over San Francisco. And uh, foul. Keith, that Dallas game isn't over yet, but as I said, they exploded, as I expected. Minnesota again with that big victory over Chicago. Detroit with a close one over Green Bay. Cleveland to squeak a one-point game over Houston. That must have been a beauty. Baltimore continues to roll. The Jets did make a game of it, by the way, against Miami. Walt Michaels doing, look it, Denver over Oakland. Oh, they'll go crazy in Bronco City. Fly ball right field. Reggie Smith lost it. Reggie never saw it. Lost that ball right in the sun. Never saw it. Tough sun field. 3.54 out here. Pacific time. Reggie looked up to spread his arms. and No way did he know where the ball was. You know must be the happiest man in America today in the other sport, football. Here's Reggie Smith. Insane. You can see him with his hands right. way apart. Just lost it. Totally lost it. Davy Lopes had no play on the ball. Davy didn't have time to tell him where it was. <laughs> Lou Pinella now coming to the plate with the leadoff man, Nettles, at first base. What a victory that'll be for a fellow named Craig Morton. How much joy for him. Swing and a miss, strike one. The expansion team's having a good one today. England came back is routing San Diego inside Steve Yeager. Yeager has a bruised knee nice backs are on it they're quite sure I'll be able to play 
Ball is hit high in the air to right center field and deep. Ben Burke goes to the track to make the catch to retire Fanella and Nettles back to first. One out in the top of the ninth inning. If I know Steve Jager, you'd have to put him in a cage. Not to, he's not going to play too that. <laughs> He'll go out there with a cast on his left leg if he has to. What a nice day this has been for a fellow named Don Sutton. For a fellow named Reggie Smith. For a fellow named Steve Yeager. And for Tommy Lasorda, of course. High pop, foul ground. Catch made by Tommy Oates. It's also been a nice day for Billy Russell, who came alive. For Davey Lutz, who had two hits. It's been a good day for Steve Garvey, who had a couple of big hits to right field, a double and a single. Tough day on Billy. Lee Lacey, and it's been a day of torment for that man, Billy Martin. The Dodgers were on the ropes, but how they rebounded today. Paul Blair at the plate with two out and Greg Nettles on first base. In the top of the ninth inning and the Dodgers leading 10 to 4. Little looper out to center. Burke there. Game's over. Dodgers win a pressure game. Now three games to two, New York. And the World Series goes on back to Yankee Stadium Tuesday night at 8 Eastern time. Don Sutton all the way for the win. 10 for Dodgers. Back after this message of the word from our local station. Sutton settles down in the ninth to retire the last three men in order for a 10 to 4 complete game victory. Now for all the Dodgers and the manager who insists he bleeds Dodger blue, redemption was over 3,000 miles away.